optical cloud. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. This is uh, double angle power reducing and half angle formulas. And although there are proofs to these, um, we are going to only talk about how to use them. If you want to see the proofs, I had put some links for school yourself and they give you kind of an informal proof of them. And I might post some uh, proofs later if you want to know where they come from. But just like we saw before, they all come from somewhere. They're not just magical uh, formulas that they somebody made up. Uh, they come from somewhere and it's actually pretty cool to see how the algebra works and how, where they come from. But we're not, we're going to basically focus on how do they work and how do we use them. Okay, so these you're going to be using a lot next year if you're going into calc. So you are going to have to memorize these. And I, a lot of you have been sending messages that you're starting to memorize a lot of stuff that looks weird, like cosine of alpha plus beta, cosine of alpha minus beta. And it didn't take you very long because you're using them a lot now. So that's what happens. Uh, so let's see, we start off with our objectives. If my computer would like to work now, maybe. There we go. So, our objectives we're going to use the double angle formulas, power reducing formulas, and the half angle formulas. So, this is our first example, which is with the double angle formulas. We did these last time, some of these. So, if you want to copy that example, it says if sine of Theta equals four over five, and theta lies in quadrant two, find the exact value of sine of two theta, right? So that first part's gonna stay the same. We're gonna do sine of two theta, cosine of two theta, and then tangent of two theta, right? So the first one is sine of two theta. So what is sine of two theta? Anybody remember? Two sine theta, cosine theta, Two sine theta, cosine theta. Good, Sarah. Two sine theta, cosine theta. Right? So we know sine theta, so we can just plug that in, right? We would just be able to plug that in. In there, but then we still have to figure out cosine of theta, right? So in order to figure out cosine of theta, we're going to have to think about where, what that four and that five is in reference to our angle. So if we have our angle here, here's our angle theta. And this is x, y, and r, right? So what is sine of theta in terms of x, y, and r? Um, isn't it? So, so it's going to be y over r? Very good. y over r. Good, Alyssa, right? Our reference angle is on the other side of that angle, right? Our reference angle would be in mm -hmm. there on the other side of that angle. And y over r means that it's going to be what? What do you mean? Like? 4 over 5, right? Oh, 4 over 5, yeah. Because that's what they gave us from the beginning, right? So now we know y and we know r. But we could have plugged it right in from the beginning. So now we know what y is, and now we know what r is, right? But in order to find cosine, we're going to need the value of what? Um, x. X. We're going to need the value of x, right? So we're going to have to figure out x. So that's a right triangle. So what can we use to figure out the value of x? Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem, right? So it's going to be x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And then we solve from there, plug in our values and solve, right? Mm -hmm. And we got, if you remember last time, we got that x equals plus or minus 3. Plus? You have two answers, plus or minus 3, but it should be which one? Plus, right? Oh, minus. Minus, minus. Why minus? I'm not sure. Notice where we're going on the x-axis. Are we going left or are we going right? Oh, we're going left. We're going left, right? So it's going to be a negative 3. That's where it comes from, right? So now we can do cosine theta, which is in terms of x, y, and r, it would be what? Um, cosine is, so it's going to be x over r. x over r, very good. Good, Alyssa. x over r, so it's going to be... Three, negative, uh, negative 3 over 5. There you go, negative 3 over 5, right? So now we can plug that in, and then the rest is just... 
multiplication, right? You're going to be doing this a lot uh, at the end of this year and going into next year all the time. There's a lot of places to make mistakes. It's not hard, but there's just a lot of places because you're going to be multiplying negatives times negatives, adding positives and negatives, and dealing with a lot of fractions and complex fractions. So you've got to start getting used to that, okay? So, so you make less and less mistakes as you go along. There's nothing more frustrating than getting to this step, which uh, means you did everything right and then getting it wrong because you multiplied something wrong, okay? Right. So you just take it one step at a time. I know my answer is going to be negative because I only have one negative in, in this. Everything's being multiplied, so the answer is going to be? Uh, negative 24 over 25. Yeah, negative 24 over 25. So I'll give you a couple of seconds to finish writing in case you were writing. Now the next two are going to look similar, but instead of sine, we're going to use cosine and tangent. So the formulas are going to be different. We're going to have the values, and we're just going to run through it in case we have to solve, right? But we're not really going to have to solve it again, okay? So cosine of 2 theta. What is cosine? Now we're finding the cosine of 2 theta. So what is the formula for cosine of 2 theta? Look it up in your notes in case you don't know. Okay. Uh, cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. Good job, George and Sarah. Okay, it's going to be cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Good job, guys. Okay, and now we have the values, so we can just plug those in and solve, right? We just plug those in and solve. Notice how quick it becomes, right? It becomes. But since they only gave us sine. Let's assume we didn't know cosine. So what did we have to do to solve for cosine? Well, first we had to figure out the information that we have in terms of x, y, and r. We knew that sine of theta was y over r, which was 4 over 5. And now we had to solve for what next? Because now we have two sides of a right triangle. We got to solve for x. Um, x. Oh, we had to have solve for x in order to figure out cosine of theta, right? So. We plug in our 4 over 5, and then we solve for x. And we got that x was negative 3 because we're going to the left. And now we figured out our cosine was negative 3 over 5, so that's how we would plug it in, right? Hopefully, mm -hmm. you guys just went straight to this step and plugged in stuff. And then from here, like I said, the rest is algebra, right? Got to multiply those two together. So negative 3 fifths quantity squared is going to be? Negative 3 fifths squared? Yeah. It's going to be, um, we're going to be 9 over 25. 9 over 25, good. And then it's going to be what? Um, minus 16 over 25. Minus 16 over 25, very good. So 9 minus 16 is? Negative 7 over Negative 25. Negative 7 over 25, good, Alyssa. Okay. Everybody got that? So we got sine, we got cosine. And notice, this was just know the formula, plug in your values. If you have to figure out something along the way, then that's how you figure it out. You draw your triangle, figure out your angle, remember your reference angle. And now, last but not least, tangent of 2 theta. What is tangent of 2 theta? Um, it's 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan squared theta. Good job, Emily. Okay. So now this is the one, right? So we don't have 10, we have sine. Well, we would start off the same thing as before. We need to figure out tan, right? So we would start off with the same thing. We start off with sine, right? We start off with sine we through our triangle, and then we have to use what we know. We know that sine is y over r, which is 4 over 5. Then we still have to figure out cosine, right? Because in order to get tangent, tangent is always sine over cosine, right? So we have to do this part. We figure out what x is, and we get that x is negative 3. So now we've got cosine. So we've got sine over cosine. So what is tangent? Tangent is going to be what? Um, 4 over 5 over negative 3 over 5. Very good. That's one way to do it. If you're talking about the triangle, and those things would cancel, right? If you're just talking about the triangle, Tangent is opposite over? Oh, oh, um, adjacent. Adjacent. So either way you can do it, Alyssa, okay? And tangent it would be, in this case, y over x, right? It would be y over x, 4 over negative 3. And if you did it the other way, you, it would have worked also. You would have canceled those when you see it. 
and you would have gotten a complex fracture, then right. the fives would have canceled in both, and you still end up with negative four over three. So I'm plugging in a negative four over three into both of those. And from here, it should be just a matter of dealing with the complex fraction, right? Simplifying this craziness. So crazy. So what happens in the numerator here? We get mm -hmm. negative eight over three. The denominator, it's going to end up being what? Is it going to be one minus or one plus? One minus. Very good. One minus, because that square is going to make that a positive, so we still have a minus, right? So one minus? 16 over 9. 16 over 9, right? And then we need to find the common denominator for that fraction, okay. right? So it's going to be 9 over 9, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's going to be 9 minus 16 is? So negative seven. Negative seven, right? And dividing fractions is the same as? Multiplying the reciprocal. Very good, multiplying the reciprocal. So I have to multiply negative eight thirds times negative nine sevenths. And then that you can either cancel here or multiply it and then reduce your fraction, whichever way you want to do it. I usually simplify before I multiply so my numbers never get too big. So what do you get? Um, you get, it's 72, right? No. Yeah. Yeah, 72, yeah, if you're doing it yeah. 72 over uh, 21. 72 over, over 21. Over 21, and then reduce it, what do you get? Um, 72 over 21. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, pay for that. It's going to be over 7. Over 7, there you go. Isn't it just 24 over 7? 24 yeah. over 7. There you go. 24 over 7. This is what I, uh, oh, let me see if I can do this here. If, do I have an annotate button? I should. I thought I did. No, maybe not. I have an annotate. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I can't show you, but the three here and the nine there, you should be able to. Uh, oh, yeah. This is what I mean. But I don't see my annotate button. Where did my annotate button go? Hi, <laughs> floating panels. Give me one second. Mm. Not here. Strange. Polls. What is this? Oh, I can add a question. Ooh, ooh, all right. I'm getting into Zoom a little too much. <laughs> Let's get back to work, Delgado. All right, next one. Sine, <laughs> cosine, and tangent. So the double angle formula has three different forms. One we already used, right? What was the first one that we used? That was that one, right? Yeah. Cosine of two theta is equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Cosine of 2 theta equals 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. And cosine of 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Okay, so write those down in case you don't have them. And the question is, why do we need three? What's the purpose of having these three? Well, they're going to be beneficial depending on what you're doing. And you're going to see that in the next example. Okay, it all depends on what you're trying to do, which one's going to be beneficial, and how do you substitute it. We good? Yes, no, maybe so. All right. Yes, we go. It says verify the identity sine of three, three theta equals three sine of theta minus four sine cubed of theta. Okay. So for this one, remember when we're verifying identities, which side do we work with? The easy one or the hard one first? The hard one. The hard one. We always tackle the hard one first. And in this one, which one looks like the hard one? The one on the right. The one on the right. I did the same thing. I said the one on the right looks harder than the one on the left. And I started working, and then I ran into issues, right? Because yeah. it looks harder. We see two terms, and I see all four, and I see a cube, and it looks scary, right? Yeah. But then when I started getting into issues, then I realized, wait a minute, 
the left looks easy, but is it easy? Have we done anything with three theta? Yeah. Have we done anything with three theta? We've done no. theta, we've done two theta, right? We right. haven't done anything with three theta, right? So actually that seems to be the more complex because the, the first step is the hardest here. Then you're gonna see how everything just kind of falls apart. So the question is, what do we do? We know where to start now, right? But what do we do with that? The first step is the hardest. And when, when you look at it, you're gonna go, oh, right? So what should we do with that? Well, three is the same as two plus one, one right? So I can split that three theta as two theta plus theta, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and split that three theta as a two theta plus theta. And when I split it, it'll let me split it. Come on, yes we go, there we go. All right, so it's two theta plus theta, right? Mm -hmm. And last class we did this, right? Sine of alpha mm -hmm. plus theta. So what is that? What's sine of alpha plus theta? Um, it's sine of A uh -huh. cosine of B plus mm -hmm. sine of, uh, right? It's, plus, no, 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 plus cosine of A sine of B. Cosine of A sine of B. Got it? Yeah. So we're gonna apply this to what we have there, right? We have sine of two theta plus theta, so it should oh. say what? It should be, what's the first sine. one gonna be? What's it my be alpha? It's sine of two theta. Sine of two theta. Cosine of theta. Cosine of theta. Plus cosine of two theta. Cosine of two theta. Sine of theta. Sine of theta. Good job. Oh. No, oh, right? So now you're seeing what's happening here, right? So now we do what? We gotta split those up, right? This is sine of two theta. Well, what was sine of two theta? Sine of two theta was what? Oh, um, hold on, I have a picture of it. It's two sine of theta, cosine of theta. It is two sine of theta, cosine of theta, right? Mm -hmm. And now what is cosine of two theta? I mean, it can be written in different ways, right? Exactly, it can be written in different ways. So the question is, which one is the appropriate one for here? Um, the one minus two sine squared. Very good, and why is that, Alyssa? Because we have two sine terms, and with the other two, we will have a cosine term. Very good, okay? So this is what Alyssa just said. Those were the three, right? So the mm -hmm. question is, which of the three would be the better one? When you look at what you're trying to do, you're trying to verify this identity. You have the signs there, right? You're trying to get to signs. Of the three, which is the only one that has signs on the right? The bottom one, right? One minus two sine squared theta, right? So that's what we're gonna replace it with, right? One minus two sine squared theta. So we're gonna take the sine two theta, this one here, and we're gonna replace it with two sine theta cosine theta. And we're gonna take the cosine of two theta and replace it with one minus two sine squared theta. Square theta. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now we've got what we wanted almost, right? We've got almost what we want here, right? We're almost right. there. So now we multiply to clean this up. So we start off, we have two sine theta. What's cosine theta times cosine theta? I have no clue. Cosine, would it be cosine theta squared? Yeah, cosine of theta oh, okay. squared or cosine squared theta, right? That square you can oh, okay. put on the outside or on the inside, but usually we put it on the inside because it's just cleaner when we're dealing oh, with it. Oh, okay. Because right? it like shows that the theta is not squared, it's the cosine. Right, exactly. It's cosine of theta that's squared. So that's why we can put it there, right? So mm -hmm. then what about the other one? What do we do here? We have to distribute, right? So yeah. one times sine theta, theta, sine of theta, right? And then sine of theta times two sine squared of theta is gonna give me what? Uh, negative sine cubed of theta. 
very good. Negative two sine cubed to theta. Oh, negative two sine cubed theta. Yeah, got it? All right, so now we're almost there. Who's a problem now? Cosine squared of theta. Very good. This is a problem now, right? But I remember one of my Pythagorean identities was that sine squared plus the cosine squared. So sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to? One. One. Very good, right? So if I subtracted sine squared of theta from both sides, I would end up with cosine squared of theta equals what? Um, if you subtracted sine squared of theta from both sides. You would be left with um, two sine of theta plus sine of theta. If from this minus... equation here, I subtract sine squared theta from this side and from this side, what do I do? Oh, oh, okay. If you, you would be left with cosine squared of theta equals one minus sine squared of theta. Good job. One minus sine squared theta, right? So mm -hmm. I'm going to replace that cosine squared theta with one minus one sine. One minus sine. Oh. And guess what? Now we've got all signs, right? We got right. all signs now, which is helping us out. Now we just need to clean that up. Now we just got to clean that up. That's the same step from before, right? Mm -hmm. We clean this up. We got we got a multiply distributed property here, right? Two sine yeah. theta times one is two sine theta, two sine theta, and then two sine theta times negative sine squared theta is going to give me what? Negative two sine cubed theta. Very good. Negative two sine cubed theta. And then it's bring down the rest, right? Mm -hmm. And now combine like terms. Now we're going to get three sine of theta. Very good. Three sine theta. Minus four sine cubed of theta. Good job, Alyssa and George. Good job. Okay. And oh. we verify the identity. Okay. Got the idea? Uh huh. Like I told you, none of this is hard, but all of it is new, right? It's just kind of working with algebra and trig at the same time. None of it is hard, it's just new, and everything that you learn, you're going to be applying right away. Every, every single formula that you see or that you uh, start to work with, you're going to be applying it right away. So it's just a clever puzzle to solve. That's all it is. Everybody good with this one? Let me look at faces here so then I know I've got everybody. The thumbs up, show me thumbs up. Hi, Musa. Hi, uh, Sapphire. All right, we're good. We move on. We press on. Power reducing formulas. What are the power reducing formulas? Anybody got them written down? Yes, no, maybe so. Took notes. No? Sine One squared. minus cosine of two theta over two. There you go. Good job, Sarah. One minus. Cosine of 2 theta over 2. What is the cosine square theta? 1 plus cosine of 2 theta over 2. Good job. And tangent square theta. 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. Very good. And if you think of this one, tangent is sine over cosine, right? So what happens to my denominators in the other two formulas? They just drop out, right? This two here and this two here, they cancel each other out, right? So they go away. So I'll give you a minute to write those down. Give me a thumbs up when you're ready, and then we'll continue on. So look for your thumbs up in your emoticon things. While I look for my I cannot believe, where is my, I should have a button so I can write on the screen and I can't find it. So disappointing. So sad, Delgado. They replaced it with another button. I gotta ask about that. So I showed it. All right, we're good? Yes, no, maybe so, we move on. Power reducing formulas, example three. Reducing the power of trigonometric functions. Write an equivalent expression for a sine uh, to the fourth of x that does not contain powers of trigonometric functions greater than one. But we got to reduce it from a four to a one. That's a long way to go. 
So let's see what we can do here. Everybody write that down. So our problem is we got to get sine uh, to the fourth of x to powers that are no greater than one. So how do we do that? Mm -hmm. We got to start somewhere, right? We start with sine fourth of x. And I remember way back when there was a rule that if I have powers that are being multiplied together, a to the n to the n, I can split those powers, right? That was a power of a power rule, and it looks like it's backwards, right? So that four, I can split it up into what? Two and two. Two and two, right? So that would be sine squared of x squared, right? Right. And I do know something about that sine squared of x. I know that I can break that up, right? One of my options would be this, right? One minus cosine squared of x, right? But would that be the appropriate one? The sine squared of x is equal to one minus cosine squared of x. Would that be the appropriate one? No. No. Why not? Because, because they it's want not to the up. power reducing formula. We want to, exactly. We need a power reducing formula, right? So that's not the appropriate one. We have to reduce the power. So we want a power reducing formula. So what's the power reducing formula for sine squared of x? One minus cosine two theta over two over two, right? So that's what I'm going to replace it with in the blank. You got that? Yes, no, maybe so? Mm -hmm. Now, what you see in red is really what goes on in your head as you're thinking through this. So you're going to see how much math you actually have to know to get to here. And you're going to go, wow. So, cool. so now I've got this squared. And I remember that way back in the day, I was taught something like this something about a over b squared. That's the same as saying what? a over b squared is a squared over b squared? a squared over b squared, right? That's a squared over b squared. So the denominator is going to be pretty easy, right? The denominator is going to be what? Four. Four, right? The question is, what happens with this numerator, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to do what? I remember doing this way back in the day, right? A minus B quantity squared, right? Mm -hmm. So that was what? A squared minus B squared. A squared. Plus B squared, right? B squared minus B squared. I don't remember. Anything you do one minus cosine two X and you multiply it by itself, right? By oh, itself. Four. So, it, it's oh. so it's A squared minus two AB plus B squared, right? Oh, so you can do it the way that Emily just said, right? Write it twice and then multiply it out, boil it, right? Either way, if you remember this and you just do one at a time, where a is one, right? One squared is one, b is cosine of 2x, so it's going to be two times, so it's going to be minus two times cosine of 2x, right? And then plus b squared. Remember, my b is cosine of 2x, so it's going to be cosine squared of 2x, because it's that squared, right? So that is my numerator. Now I can split these apart. I also remember that when I had stuff like this, a plus b plus c over d, I could split them up as separate fractions, right? So I'm going to split these up. So it's going to be, the first one's going to be 1 over 4, right? 1 over 4, okay. And then? Uh, negative 2 cosine 2x two over 4. Very good. And that 2 over 4 is going to reduce to what? 1 over 2. 1 over 2, right. So it's going to be minus 1 over 2 cosine of 2x, right? And then the last one's going to be what? Cosine squared of 2x over 4. Very good. Cosine squared of 2x over 4 or 1 fourth that, right? Mm -hmm. So now what? Delgado, this is not looking any better, but look at your power. We started at four, and what do we have left? Two. A cosine squared, right? So that guy's still an issue, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, none of them can be greater than one, so this guy's still an issue, so we have to fix that guy. So how do we fix that guy, right? We got to deal with that. Well, what was cosine squared of theta? Um... 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. There you go. 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. So 
So we're going to replace that cosine square root 2x with 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2, right? And remember that theta is essentially 2x, right? So that's why mm -hmm. we have 2 times 2x. Good with that? You guys know maybe so? Yes. All right. From here, now we've got no powers greater than 1. From here is just clean it up and make it look pretty, right? So we got to take that one fourth and multiply it by that one plus cosine of two times two x over two, right? Inside the parentheses, two times two x is going to give me four x. Four x, right? And then that one fourth times the two over there is going to give me a one half. Right. One eighth. Oh, right. one eighth. Yeah. One eighth, right. So this is going to be one eighth. Uh, and now, what do we do? Um, I got the one eighth outside the parentheses, right? So I have to do what with it? Combine it with the one fourth. Or no, 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 no. Multiply it. Distribute it. Distribute it. Very good. One eighth times one is one eighth. One eighth, and then one eighth times cosine of four x would be one eighth times cosine, cosine of four x. Right. Right. Times cosine of 4x. And finally, we have to combine like terms, which are the only two terms I can combine here. The 1 8th and 1 4th. 1 8th and 1 4th, which is going to give me um, 3 8ths, right? 3 8ths, very good. So it's going to be 3 8ths minus 1 half cosine of 2x plus 1 8th cosine of 4x. We good? Mm -hmm. Notice the fractions and the algebra is getting tricky, right? So you're dealing back with your algebra one end of the year stuff and your algebra two end of the year stuff on another level. So you've got to sharpen those skills in case they're a little rusty. Uh, that's the tricky part. The, the cosine and sine part, that's the new stuff is not hard, but when you start applying it to fractions and stuff, that's where the complex fractions get tricky. Everybody got mm -hmm. that? Let's move on. Half angle formulas. Sine of alpha over 2 is equal to. Anybody got it? Read their notes? No? Um, it's plus or minus, and then you square all of 1 minus cosine, what is that, a over 2? Mm -hmm. Very okay. good. Good job, Emily. Okay. So it's plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine of alpha over 2. What is the cosine of alpha over 2? Plus or minus. Uh-huh. Plus or minus. Square root. Keep going. 1 plus cos a over 2. Good job, George. 1 plus cosine alpha over 2. And tangent of alpha over 2. You can see what's going to happen here, right? When we do sine over cosine, what's going to cancel? The two. The two. The twos are going to cancel, right? So you end up with plus or minus the square root of one minus cosine of alpha over one plus the cosine of alpha, right? So take a minute to write those down. Or take a screenshot or take a pic. I'll say cheese. <laughs> All right, we good? Yeah. Here we go. Let's see. The plus or minus symbol in each of the formulas does not mean that there are two possible values for each function. This is very, very important, okay? Doesn't mean there are two. That means it's either going to be positive or negative. And that is going to depend on the value of your half angle, okay? Wherever your half angle lies. Whoa. Here we go. Says instead... The plus or minus indicates that you must determine the sign of the trigonometric function plus or minus based on the quadrant which the half angle alpha over 2 lies. So wherever alpha over 2 lies, that's going to be the sign. If you remember, you have all students take calculus, right? All are positive in the first quadrant. Only sine is positive in the second quadrant. Mm -hmm. Only tangent is positive in the third. And only cosine is positive in the Okay, so that's going to apply now. Well, let's see how this works. 
Uh, here's your problem. It says use cosine of 210 degrees, which equals negative square root of 3 over 2, to find the exact value of the cosine of 105 degrees. So how do we do this? Well, 105 is what part of 210? Half of it. Half of it, right? It's half of it, right? So cosine of 105 is the same thing as saying cosine of? 210 over 2. 210 over 2, right? So that means we can use our half angle formula for cosine, right? Mm -hmm. so cosine of alpha over 2 is equal to what again? Plus or minus? Um, cosine plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine of A over 2. Very good. Good, Alyssa. Okay, 1 plus cosine of alpha over 2. Okay? So now we can apply these, this idea on here, right? So it's a cosine of 210 over 2, right? Is equal to, is it going to be plus or is it going to be minus? What's going to go there? Now remember, the sign is based on the quadrant, the half angle line, right? Mm -hmm. What is the half angle? Alpha over 2 is equal to how many degrees? Uh, 105. 105, right? And where does 105 degrees lie? In which quadrant? Quadrant 2. Quadrant 2. Good, Sarah, right? 105 is in quadrant 2. That means that it is going to be what? Negative. Negative. It's going to be negative. Got the idea? Mm -hmm. So now we know it's going to be negative. Now we can just start to plug in the rest into the formula, right? So it's the square root of 1 plus cosine of what? Um, 105. Now, 105, does it say? Um, 210. 210. 210, right? 1 plus cosine of 210, right? Mm hmm And now we start to just fill in and do the algebra now, right? Now it's, notice everything is still the same, but now cosine of 210, they told us from the beginning, is what? Negative uh, square root of 3 over 2. Negative square root of 3 over 2. Wow, that looks cool. Looks scary, but it looks cool, right? The square, how many of you have seen stuff like that before? Anybody? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Nobody's seen stuff like that before. It just gets crazy. I'll say, hey, you know, you've seen stuff like that, Alyssa and Emily. Good. And boy, it looked crazy, right? That's when you start mm -hmm. going, I don't like math because it's got stuff that I haven't seen before. You just handle it the way you handle it normally, right? One piece at a time. Oops. So I added an extra step. When I saw this, I solved it differently, but they did it differently than I did. So I know I'm going to have to rationalize a denominator, right? Notice it's the same step as before. So in order to rationalize the denominator, I broke it apart. I did the square root of the numerator, square root of the denominator, and then I went ahead and multiplied it by the square root of 2 over 2. They did it under the radical. So I just put the 1 there, right? Because you're going to have to get rid of that denominator. But 1's not going to work, right? What version of 1 is going to work here? If I have to rationalize the denominator. Two? Two. Very good. So it has to be two over two, right? So it's going to have to be a two over two. And then I go ahead and multiply. And that two really looks like it's in the, this one over here looks like it's in the denominator. But it's, it, it's part of the numerator, really. So I just kind of moved it up a little bit. So in that way, you can see that that's really part of the numerator. So what's going to happen to those two twos? They're going to cancel, right? Mm -hmm. One in the numerator, denominator, they're going to be multiplied together. And those twos on the bottom are going to become a what? Two times two. Um, a four. A four, right. So I'm going to end up with two minus the square root of three over four, right? And the square root of four is? Two. Two, right. So I end up with something that looks like this. The square root of two minus the square root of three over two. Yep. Got it there still, maybe so? Mm hmm All right. Let's take a picture. We press on. Okay. So these are the half angle formulas. Go ahead and write these down. And they work the same way. We're not going to do any examples of this because now we're pushing time-wise. And I don't know if somebody has class after. 
and I didn't put any examples after this anyway. So, but we'll stop here, just write down the formulas, but they work the same way as the other ones. You plug them in, you use your angle, and then plug in your value, okay? If you have any questions, something that you couldn't solve, as usual, you can always email it to me or come during office hours, and then I'll help you with it then, okay? If you email them to me over the weekend, I will try to get them back to you. Let me see before you guys go. Let me take a picture. I'm glad Emily you found it helpful. Uh, let me take a picture so I have your attendance here who came to class today. Give you credit. All righty. So everybody good? Yes. I got to see your faces. That's the rule. I got to see your faces. I don't see any faces here. Eh, eh. Hi, Sapphire. Hi, Jordan. Hey. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Emily. Where's Emily? I don't see Emily. I don't see who. <laughs> Musa, where are you? Hi, Emily. It's so happy to see you guys. I haven't seen you so long. You're so grown up now. <laughs> Musa's not there. She left. She fell asleep. I was so bored. All right. <laughs> Have a wonderful afternoon, guys. Uh, if, again, too. if you need anything, let me know and show up whenever you need to. If you need to show up more than once, I'll be here for three hours every day, okay? Sometimes I just sit here and I do this because nobody shows up at the same time as me. <laughs> it's sad. All right. Have a good one. Bye. All right, you too. Bye. 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 Musa, are you there?